They usually play basketball on this court, though it doesn't look very much like it right now. That's because there's a very special game being played on these boards tonight, the Computer Bowl All-Star Game. The best and the brightest of computer techies from around the country will be here for the national championship of computer trivia. Bill Gates, Bill Joy, Mitch Caper, Andy Grove, an all-star cast of computer celebrities will be here for the Computer Bowl All-Star Game on this special edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. And by Hewlett Packard, Personal Computer Division. Welcome to the Computer Bowl All-Star Game again, presented by the Association for Computing Machinery. We're here at the San Jose Civic Auditorium and via satellite in Redmond, Washington, Boston, Massachusetts. It's halftime at the Computer Bowl, and the score after two rounds of play, and listen to me carefully, is West Coast 80, East Coast 70. There was a mistake in the scoring in the first half, and the East Coast got credit for a question which they didn't answer. We've checked with both official scorers. The score is correct. It's West Coast 80, East Coast 70, okay? All right, for those of you who missed the first half of the Computer Bowl, let me re reintroduce our two all-star teams. Beginning with the East Coast from Foundation Technologies Limited, Neil Colvin, Bob Frankston of Microsoft, the captain of the East Coast team, Mitch Kapor of the Electronic Frontier Foundation, author and historian, Pamela McCordick, and David Nelson of Novell Multimedia. Now for the West Coast All-Stars, Bill Gates of Microsoft, <laughs> computer consultant Jeff Kalb, the captain of the West Coast team, Bill Joy from Sun Microsystems, David Liddell of Interval Research Corporation, and Harry Saul of Smart Valley Incorporated. Our referees again tonight are Charlie Bachman, John Doerr, Pat McGovern, Heidi Roizen, and John Schock. And once again, our official examiner for this all-star game from the Intel Corporation, Dr. Andrew Grove. The West is ahead by 10 points, 80 to 70. Andy, let's get going with our first 10-point question. Okay, if you are a movie trivia buff, you probably know the phrase, Kla tu barada niktu. David Liddell, West Coast. David? <laughs> what was the question he's thinking? In the day the earth stood still, the robot Gort was uh, summoned by those words. That's a lot of nice stuff, but it's not the right answer. <laughs> Let's repeat the question for the East Coast and complete it. If you are a movie trivia buff, you probably know the phrase, I don't know if I can say it the same way twice, <laughs> Kla tu barada niktu. That phrase, in fact, appeared in two sci-fi movies. Can you name both of them? How good are you? That phrase was seen in two science fiction movies. You might have a guess as to what one of them was. Anybody, I, I've got to like call time here. Yes, yes, okay. It was, of course, in the day the earth stood still, and it was in Tron. Those words appeared on the blackboard of a programmer in the movie Tron. All right, let's go on to the next question. These are tough, this is the all-star game, guys. <laughs> In 1993, a front-page New York Times article reported that a Long Island computer programmer named Michael LaFaro used a novel technique to persuade one of his clients to pay a past-due consulting bill. What? David Liddell, West Coast. David? He caused his program to stop working uh, until the bill was paid. One more shot. Be more specific. I'll give you a second try. What did he do to get his client to pay the bill? Move as quickly as That's as far as we can go. 
Um, I think we've got to turn it over to the East Coast. I'm sorry. Anybody like to take a shot on the East Coast? Bob Frankston, oh, the East pro Coast. The, progr Bob? the program was supposed to stop functioning as of a given date. And the newspaper referred to it as a virus, but that wasn't the Yeah, I think we've time. got it now, right? That's it, exactly. He put a virus in this client's computer and it would stop working at a certain date. Okay, that's Bonus it. round. All right, a bonus round indeed. It's time for the East Coast. Okay, the score, let's see. It is now 80 to 80. We have a tie ball game, 80 to 80. I don't know why people are hissing. That was fair and square. All right, the category is online services. The information superhighway, okay? Three questions, 10 points apiece. Last year, one of the major online services was acquired by an international media magnet. Which service, which media magnet? It was Delphi and it was acquired by Rupert Murdoch. Absolutely right, 10 points for the East. All right, you guys are ahead now. Next chance to get 10 points. The current presidential administration in Washington has strongly identified itself with the information superhighway. In fact, you can email President Clinton on the internet. What is the president's address on the internet? It's president at whitehouse.gov. You've got it, 10 points, okay. A shot at 10 more points now in this bonus round. What or who are Archie and Veronica? Archie and Veronica are? They're, they're internet protocols that are used for, uh, Ar Archie is used to tell you the location that particular uh, files are stored at FTP, and Veronica does the same thing for Gopher. I think we got it, guys, right? All right, another 10 points. That was a big one. The East Coast is now ahead, 110, 80 for the West. Next toss-up question, Andy. The ENIAC is a legendary computer in the history of computing. In what year was the ENIAC first turned on? David Nelson, East Coast. David? 1946. Boy, that's good. All right, 10 points again. Well done. <laughs> Next toss-up question. Doug Engelbart is credited with designing the first computer mouse. How many buttons were there on that mouse? David Liddell, West Coast. David? There were three. There sure were. That's worth 10 points. All right, we've got, a, we've got a prop now for this next question. I'm going to hold this thing up. Let me hold it for a second to make sure our cameras can get a look at it. And then, Andy, you can ask the question. Can you identify this important computer artifact? David Nelson, East Coast. David? It's an Ethernet tap. All right, 10 points for the East. Thank you. Victor 9000 computer featured an innovative design in his disk drives. What was unique? At Neil Colvin, East Coast. Variable speed. Very good. Variable speed disk drive. That was the innovation. Okay. Bonus round. It's time for the West Coast. The score, let's see. It is 110, 140, I'm sorry, to 90. You guys need 30 points right now, I would think. All right, a chance to earn 30 points and get back into this game. The category is software. <laughs> we got a fighting chance. Chance to earn 30 points. Here's the first question. Intel, Andy, you'll have to check me on this. Did you say software? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. Listen. Intel entered the software market this year with its first ever end-user PC software product. What was it? What's it called? Worth 10 points. Intel's first end user PC product. ProShare. ProShare is right, Andy. Okay, 10 points. All right, here's the second question. A US software company recently received the first ever copyright for a computer program that generates type fonts. What's the name of the company that got that copyright? Worth another 10 points in this bonus round. Try to catch up to those East Coast guys. The company? Adobe. Adobe is right. Another 10 points. You guys are good. All right, here's another shot now. Last one. What was the internal code name for Borland's Quattro spreadsheet? What was the internal code name for Borland's Quattro spreadsheet? Worth another 10 points. 
I have to ask you for an answer, Bill. I need an answer, Bill. Now, now, now. Trio. No, I'm afraid not. It was Buddha because it was going to assume the lotus position. That's the right answer. All right, the score is East Coast 140, West Coast 110. Next toss-up question. The market research firm Computer Intelligence released a report on the most popular brands of IBM-compatible PCs in the United States in 1993. It reported that IBM had the largest market share and Compaq was second. Which computer company came in third? David Liddell, West Dell. Coast. Sorry. David? Dell Computer. That is wrong, I'm afraid. Let's go to the East Coast. IBM, Compaq, and who would like to give it a shot? David Nelson. The East other David? Coast. Tandy. That's not correct either. The answer is Zenith. Zenith was third. <laughs> Next question. In 1976, a computer fair was held in Atlantic City, New Jersey. At that show, Steve Jobs ripped his blue jeans. Another attendee came to his rescue and sued him up. Bob Frankston, East Coast. What, what? Bob, what's the answer? Dottie Veets. I'm sorry, say again? Dottie Veets, Stan Veets' wife. That's correct. No, no, wait, is that correct? The wife of, okay. The answer is the wife of V. Of, of, yeah, the V, yes. Oh, is that right? Is a little, little? I don't think so. No, no it's not. We're close, but not quite. Right? So the answer's wrong. No. All right. He said the wife of Stan Veet, correct? Uh, uh, we're That's a little confused here. That's what he said. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Bob, give me the full answer. I said Stan Veet's the wife of Stan Veet's. And That's that what he said, is we have not that wrong. the correct answer. So we'll give a shout over here, and Bill has rung his buzzer. Bill, what do you think? His, his jeans were, the holes in his jeans were sewed by the wife of Paul Veet. Are, are we there? We're getting close. We, 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 <laughs> who is Paul Veet? We think that might be right if you would tell us tell who, who Paul Veet is. is. She, it's the mother of the guy who wrote the book. That's yeah. Right. Stan Veet's mother-in-law is the answer. Okay. Well done. Ten points for the West. Time. All right. We're out of time. That that is the end of. Yes. It's a mother-in-law. Paul Veet's would not be the mother-in-law. Hold it. Mother and right. mother in law. Paul wife would be the mother, and it's the mother in law, we believe. So they're both wrong. So yeah. they both answers are wrong, you're telling me. Yeah. <laughs> right, both are wrong. Good try, guys. Take away those 10 points from the West. Let's get rid of this question. Now, get rid of that question. It was too darn complicated to begin with. Doesn't matter, guys. At the end of round three, the score is still East Coast 140. West Coast 110, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. This is it, guys. The fourth quarter, the last round of the Computer Bowl All-Star Game. The score right now is the East Coast 140, the West Coast 110. This is it. Last shot, let's go to a toss-up question, Andy. In 1963, Tandy bought Radio Shack. How many stores were in the Radio Shack chain at that time? Was it 9, 15, 26, or 42? Bill Gates, West Coast. Bill? Nine. Nine is the right answer. That's 10. There were several consumer-oriented online services available today, but one of the original online services, online systems, was CompuServe. In what year did CompuServe first go online? Was it 1969, 1971, or 1974? David Nelson, East Nin Coast. What do you think, David? 1969. That's the right answer for 10 points. Bonus round. 
All right, it's time for a bonus round. The East Coast is ahead 150 to 120, and it's your turn, East Coast, for a bonus round. You can stretch that lead. This could be putting it away. The category is computer industry personalities. <laughs> Three questions, 10 points apiece. IBM is often been known as a company that tries very hard to protect its trade secrets. That policy apparently applies to people, too. When Louis Gerstner was among the final nominees for the top job at JetBlue, he was given an internal code name. What was the code name? Was it Able, Little Blue, Cyber Kid, or Blackbird? What was Lou Gerstner's code name when he was one of the final candidates at IBM? Blackbird. That's not correct, I'm afraid. Able. The answer is Able. All right, here's another shot, another 10 points. Who is generally credited with having coined the term virtual reality? Jaron Lanier. Right for 10 points, Jaron Lanier. Another shot at 10 points. Scott Page is one of the founders of Seventh Level, a company which sells interactive multimedia entertainment software. At one time, Scott Page played saxophone for a popular rock group. Which group? Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd is right. Another 10 points. All right, you guys picked up the lead here. The East Coast 170, West Coast 120. All right, here's your chance, guys. We're running out of time. Andy, go. The New York Times was one of the first newspapers to switch from hot type to computerized typesetting. The first computer typeset edi edition hit the stands on July 2nd of what year? Pamela McCordick, East Coast. Pam? 1980. That is not correct. Anybody from the West Coast like to take a shot? Bill Joy, West Coast. Bill? 1979. One more. It was 1978, I'm afraid. That was a tough one. All right, let's try another 10-point question. Parts of a famous historical computer have appeared on television in the sci-fi series Time Tunnel and Lost in Space. What machine was it? What famous computer was on Time Tunnel and Lost in Space? Parts of it anyhow. Anybody want to give it a try? Famous historical computer on two sci-fi TV shows. Bill Joy. Bill's going to try Coast. it. Univac. That's not correct. Anybody want to take a shot on these? Pam wants to Pamela try it. Pamela McCordy. Stretch. East Coast. Pam. The stretch. No. The answer was the sage. The sage. Let's try another 10-point question, Andy. Among the many acronyms in the computer field is this one, FTP. What? David Liddell. West Coast. FTP, David, it stands for? File Transfer Protocol. Sure does. Ten points. <laughs> what was the first? Hold, hold, hold it. That's the bonus round noise, bonus Andy. Bonus round. The score is 170 for the East, 130 for the West. It's a 40-point spread. You can make 30 points right now, guys. <laughs> this is it. This is the last bonus round. The category is computer games. Here's your first chance at 10 points. Sega is now the dominant company in 16-bit video game units in the United States. The name Sega is an acronym. What does Sega stand for? Why is Sega called Sega? Or Sega? Need an answer, gentlemen. Pretty quick. Sega stands for? Strategic Electronic Games. No, good idea, but service games, believe it or not. Service games is where Sega got its name. All right, we got two more shots here. Another 10 points. When Nolan Bushnell and Ted Dabney started Atari Corporation in 1972, they each coughed up an equal amount of money. How much did they each put up? And I can just take it in figures. Was it three figures? Four figures or five figures? How much did Nolan Bushnell and Ted Dabney put up to start Atari back in 1972? Was there an individual investment in three figures, four figures, or five figures? Three. That's right. <laughs> 250 bucks a piece. Good guess. All right, is, is, 10 more points now. 
In 1990, a computer beat a world chess champion for the very first time. Can you name the computer and the chess master who got beat by it? This was 1990, the first time a computer beat a world chess master. I need the two who played in the game, the computer and the person. Deep thought, Nigel Short. I'm afraid not. The computer was Mephisto, and the chess player was Anatoly Karpov. Tough one. All right, the score is 170, 140 right now. Favor the East Coast. <clears throat> All right, let's get back to toss-up questions. What was the first commercially available computer with a 12-bit word? David Liddell, West Coast. David. Uh, digital PDP-8. That's what not... The PDP-8, the PDP... No, hold on, that's not the right answer. So we'll go to the East Coast and finish the question. What... Go ahead. Was it the DEC PDP-8, the PDP-5, the LINK, or the CDC-160? David Nelson, East Coast. David? Uh, CDC-160. That's the right answer. <laughs> Ten more points for the East. In 1993, Christie's auctioned off a computing artifact that went for $11.8 million. What was it? Your choice is a Greek calendar computer from the year 80 BC, a mechanical calculator from the 19th century, or a vacuum tube assembly from the ENIAC. Pamela McCordick, East Coast. What well, was it, Pamela? It was a 19th century computer. It sure was. It was from 1822, a mechanical calculator by Johann Christoph Schuster. All right, next question. U.S. News and World Report, Report recently asked engineering school deans to rank graduate schools to see which one had the best program in computer engineering. Who came in number one? Was it Stanford? Carnegie Mellon. Mitchell Kapoor, East Coast. Carnegie Mellon. That is not the correct answer. Finish reading the question, and West gets a shot at it. Caltech or MIT? Which of those four came in first in a ranking as to who was the best school for computer engineering? Need an answer quickly. Bill Joy, West Coast. Bill, what do you think? Stanford. No, that's not right. The answer was MIT. <clears throat> We got some grads here. All right, go ahead, Andy. One of the earliest spreadsheet programs was called Sourcin. Who wrote it? David Liddell, West Coast. David? The spreadsheet from Sourcin was written by Richard Frank. That's right for 10 points. <laughs> Music means we're out of time for the fourth round. We're out of time for the computer bowl. It's all over. The East Coast wins 190 to 150. The winner and world champion is the East Coast. Congratulations to our winners. Thanks to all of our contestants and to all of you for joining us for this computer bowl all-star game. Also, special thanks to the Computer Museum of Boston, the Association for Computing Machinery, Intel Corporation, Computer World Magazine, all the sponsors and underwriters who made this event possible. For those of you watching on television, that's it for this special edition of the Computer Chronicles. Good night to all of you.